Hi, gang. Here we are again. Talking about songwriting. Let me get the chat up. Let me get the chit chat up and the chat chit up and the chat chat and the chat up. Let's see, did I have that? I thought I had that bookmarked. I do. Here we go. Hooray, we're here. Hooray. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Make that small and bring it over here. There we go. All right. Good to have you guys and gals aboard. Let me see. Um, let me see. See if I have to. Let's see. Wait a minute. Let me get that link again. I just remembered I have to do this link thing for you guys. Let's see where that is. Um, up here. Where'd it go? Oh, I thought I had that link up here I wanted to post that link again to my um, to my folders and let me think where that is that that is um, it's on Google Drive okay let's go to Google I don't know why I'm having trouble finding it today but let's go to Google and we'll go to Let's see if I got my, my thing here. Let's see, Google Apps. Go to Google Drive. And uh, we want to go to the Creative Vets. There it is. Okay. So that is. Make sure we get the whole thing. Copy it. Okay. Now we're going back to Reddit here. And we're going to post this in here. Get the positive spelled right. Uh, hmm. Positive. Isn't that spelled right? Oh well, you'll get it. You'll get the idea. Um, okay, and I will post that. And there you go. Because we want to start out with that, because we got some we got some lyrics today to look at. All right, good, good. All right. Now we're going to wait for some people to to get in here and say hello. Oh, there's Mr. Two. Hey, good to have you. Good to have you. So you want to go to that link there. Uh, that link is going to, uh, and go to the uh, up-tempo positive song, song list, all right? And uh, that's going to bring up a whole bunch of songs. And uh, first we're going to talk about... Um, basically the, the 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 basic structure 
for such a song, all right? We'll talk about the different ways that it can be done. Just waiting for a few more people to show up here. Let's see if we can get some more folks to sign in. <clears throat> to sign in. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, take your time. All right, Mr. Two, I hear you. I hear you. I am taking my time. In fact, I'll be right back because I've been preparing this uh, lecture today and I haven't had a chance to use the restroom, so I'm going to do that real quick. All right? All right. I'll be right back. All right, thanks for your patience. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Two, you're working as well, right? Okay. Yep, yep. Yep, I got my water. And I got my, you know, coffee. Speaking of which, I need to heat this up. So I'm going to go rid of it. I'm just going over here to use my microwave. go slide around yeah yeah yes exactly man glazed <laughs> glazed black <laughs> that's a dang truth until you have your coffee you're all we're all glazed black you know and then suddenly the light comes shining through the clouds um. Oh, yeah, nice and warm. Uh, I'm actually on a diet. <clears throat> it's a uh, it's mini fasting. I only eat one meal a day, and that's in the evening. So in, during the day, I only drink water and liquids. I eat an orange or an apple usually around uh, around this time, you know, around maybe 11 or so. But I find uh, if I get hungry, I just drink a bunch of water, and then I feel full as all get out for a minute. And then at night, I eat a regular meal, small portion, not too big, but I try to get all the, you know, the vegetables and the, blah, 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 you know, all that stuff in there, all the good organic food. Yeah. So, uh, and it's working. I've lost uh, eight pounds over the last uh, two weeks, maybe two or three weeks, two weeks. So it's, it's, it's. You know, going down, living on, on my fat. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's get started on this. It's, it's, uh, it's almost quarter after. So, uh, good time to, uh, 
to get started. Up tempo, positive songs. Up tempo, positive songs. You know, uh, down on Music Row and out in LA and uh, in London and New York. If you're a publishing company and you're trying to pitch to an artist, the number one song that they are always looking for is up-tempo, positive songs. All right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Todd says, yeah, he should try that. Yeah, well, it works. I mean, as long as you don't gorge yourself in the evening, you know, if you eat like two big helpings of enchiladas, that's just going to put all the calories that you need for the day back on back inside of you and you're not going to be burning fat right you just because you wake up the next morning you got enough you got enough of that enchilada in there to digest what you want to do is you want to wake up with an empty stomach so that as you're going through the day you live on on this you know i'm like i used to be like seven months pregnant not attractive for a guy you know um so now i'm you know now i'm four months pregnant so you know it's getting smaller so that's the the trick is to live on your fat for a while and then uh give yourself a little nourishment anyway back to um back to uptempo positive so publishers are looking for tempo positive songs for their artists, for the artists out there. Um, I guess because they're the hardest ones to write. Um, it, it does make sense in a way because, you know, when you think about it, um, songs that have a lot of angst, you know, struggle, jealousy, anger, fear, all those songs create curiosity and interest. It's like a challenge to solve or not to solve. You know, sometimes those kind of songs don't end happy, right? But uh, we all want to know how it's going to come out. Um, we like to hear about struggle. It's, it's cathartic, you know, because, you know, we all struggle at one time or another in our lives. And uh, we don't want to be alone in that struggle, right? Todd's here, yeah. Oh yeah, good. Todd, Todd's gonna try it. Try the try the mini diet. Yeah, it's good. Uh, so um, we're all interested in struggle, uh, but you know, happiness. You, we love to be happy, right? But is it entertaining? You know, to just go, woo, I'm happy. You know. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> So it's, they're harder to write because um, they can sound, up-tempo positive songs can sound wishy-washy, they can sound melodramatic, and they can sound cliche, right? So how are we going to, there's no pain, there's no angst, there's no anger, there's nothing to overcome, there's no journey to ride, right? So um, how are we going to pull this off? Well, um... We're going to show you how some people pulled it off. I don't have the know-it-all answer for everything in this category, but I'm going to give you my take on it as of right now. All right? Um, let's talk about, first of all, I think this is important, talk about the basic tools that we have. Um, the basic tools that all songwriters have, besides, of course, your wonderful creative power, you know, here and here, you know, your your brain and your heart and your feet, you know, uh, all these wonderful uh, chakras that you have. Uh, uh, but the, the tools you have, once you've, you know, once you get into your creative space, the tools that you have to work with are original details, which is important to stress the original part. Because, you know, when, uh, when we're writing, uh, we realize originality is, 
nothing more than a series of tiny surprises. So we're going to use, you know, language and, and, um, and uh, you know, things in life that everyone has heard before. Um, but we want to throw in a smattering of originality, of original details thrown in amidst the, you know, the standard generic uh, writing. You know, we want to sprinkle it with a little of that uh, original stuff. It's important to have some, some, uh, some details in your song that aren't heard every day, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is contrast. And the third thing is repetition. So original detail, contrast, and repetition. We're going to make those three things work for us in a positive way. In a, in a, we're going to look at positive lyrics today, but we want to understand what our three basic tools are. Now, our basic formats that we have <clears throat> are chorus songs and non-chorus songs. Those are the framework we can put them in. Now, a lot of songs, a lot of positive uh, up-tempo songs are um, chorus songs. And the reason for that being, not all of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are. Why? Because <clears throat> you get a chance to sing the big power chorus, you know, which makes everybody get up and dance, you know. You have your details first, and then you're building and building and building to that big woo, chorus, you know. So, uh, you know, uh, chorus songs are, are, are often popular. So if somebody said to me, Hey Rick, we got to write an up-tempo song today. I might say, well, you know, let's let's go easy on ourselves. Let's try to write a, a power chorus, a big a big celebratory chorus, and then just see where that goes. All right. Uh, sometimes I've found that when I write a chorus, it actually turns into like a non-chorus, meaning that I I just want to do chorus. And then I want to do another chorus, and then maybe a little example of that other chorus, and then another chorus. So it ends up being A, A, B, A, you know. So sometimes choruses can turn into the whole song. So you write one chorus and you go, woo, that is so much fun. Why don't I just write another chorus? And so sometimes we end up doing that. So then we don't have a really, we just have a lot of choruses, and then maybe a little bridge, because why we want What's the word? Contrast. So after two sections of ver or not verses, but a sections, you want to have a contrast. You want to have a bridge, right? It's the same thing with chorus songs. You have a verse. You might have a pre-chorus and then a chorus. All these things are contrasting um, the rhyme scheme and the line length. I really try to make those different. Uh, so that we have that sense of contrast. Contrast creates interest. Original details create interest. Also repetition, when it's used correctly, also creates interest. All those things are, are, are tricks to make our songs more interesting and to hold the audience's attention, right? And every time we sit down to create, it's, it's like a dance. It's a new dance that we have every time we sit down Brand new dance. We don't know how the dance is going to go. Uh, one day you do more contrast and less repetition. The next day uh, a different creative process is happening. And you do end up doing a lot of repetition and not much contrast. So that's, you know, that's just the way it works in the wonderful imagination of our, of our songwriting brain, right? Uh, so that's what we have to work with. And we have, like I said, we have the different forms. Um... I, I've said this many times, and I'll say it again on this lecture, and that is, um, or this gathering, um, music always dominates lyrics. So when I think of up-tempo, positive, I want to start with some music that's really, that's really happy and upbeat, right? Now, again, depending on the vibration where we are and what we're doing, um, I'm going to consider less minor chords and more major chords. 
for the simple reason is, I mean, it's called minor chords, right? I mean, why is it called minor chords? Because it's kind of sad, minor, you know? It's not, it's not, you know, it's major sounds. Oh, yeah, major is very important. Minor is kind of often, the, you know, it's... So minor chords are traditionally um, sad. Uh, again, how you use them can determine whether uh, it's going to be sad or not. Like, for instance, here's my beautiful coronavirus beauty here. Um, disregard this capo. Uh, uh, my guitar is tuned down to low D, so this is actually normally normal tuning here. So, uh, I mean, it, obviously, like uh, reggae music uses. Uh, um, So you can make a minor chord happy simply by just that that wonderful uh, the skippity doo da beat that, that I'm doing. Um, but you can tell by just the sound of it that it's got a sadness about it. So depending on how you want to approach it, um, you know, throwing in a little minor uh, chord here and there in a positive song. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, there's nothing wrong with, you know, getting a little angst, getting a little angst and then bringing it back to positive. A little angst, bring it back to positive. Again, we're contrasting and we're keeping interest. And so there's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, um, yes, the power chorus, uh, what... What uh, vocally cre creates a power chorus is usually like if, if if I'm singing, if I'm singing here. So my my range of notes is na 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 na. My power chorus is going to be up at least a third higher than na na a third would be uh and uh, um, a fifth would be uh or uh, na, na, that's my that's my um, bass note my my to tonic na i could even sing a whole octave above the tonic na, 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 na. So uh, a power chorus is usually, uh, almost always, the vocal is, is, is above the range of the verse by at least a third, sometimes a fifth, and sometimes a whole octave. So sometimes, the, like I said, the, the, the chorus will be singing, I got a love, da, da, ba, da, and then the chorus will be, da, 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 da. almost, it can be even the same melody, an octave higher, right? So that creates that big huge celebratory chorus is a uh, singing higher right um 
You can also, if you don't want to sing, if you have a limited range, you can also sing longer notes or sh or shorter notes to, for punctuation. So if my if my verse is. <laughs> with longer notes. So my verses could be same same note. Let's use that same note. So I'm using, I've limited my, my contrast ability because I'm not going to jump way up. I'm going to use the same notes that I'm using in the verse. So I have to contrast, the only contrast I've got left is the, is the, the length of the note, how long I hold the note. So rather than a series of short notes, <laughs> the difference by holding that note out. Also by holding notes for a long time is, is a little sort of a cheating little thing because now we don't have to say as many words. <laughs> because we're going love you, love you, man I'll love you all night long. I'm gonna love you, love you tonight. And then the verses got them symptoms come me. Got a whole lot of money than a memory And all like I did not really don't mean it'd be fine I got a heart I got a love you See what I mean? Uh, that that uh, I'm using the same notes but really making them a lot longer But in, a, in the case of a, a, an up-tempo positive I'm more than likely going to want to jump up, you know. Uh, I would only write a, a tempo positive with using the same notes, the same um, notes in the in the chorus and the verse. Only if I knew the artist I was pitching for had an extremely limited um, vocal range. Um, I, I was told, um, I haven't analyzed this, but I was told that uh, George Strait, for instance, had a very limited vocal range. And when you were pitching to him, uh, they, they, you know, they asked you not to go much farther than an octave. A male singer, the average male singer can sing an octave and maybe three notes, maybe four notes. So it's still limited with a, with a, a male. Female singers um, often can sing a, a little bit more range than that. Uh, you know, maybe an octave and, and, and five notes. Uh, again, it doesn't seem like very much, uh, but uh, you can sure do a lot with, you can do a lot with, with, a, with a little over an octave. An octave and, a, and three notes. You can, you can write infinite number of songs with that, even with that limited range. Mm. Another thing that can uh, that can make your up tempo uh, song uh, a little more interesting interesting is the sudden stop. Like um, we're just talking about musical and texture and rhythm, so I can be going. <laughs> Stops are really 
they really grab people's attention. Uh, so that's another little, you know, little, boop, little like a little explanation point. Uh, when you do those sudden stops, that's uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, percussion in a, in a, in, a, in recording, percussion is a, is a wonderful way to keep keep everything going. You know, the not just a drum, but percussion, tambourine, uh, uh, maracas, um, claves. Um, all those different kinds of uh, percussion and some timbali in, in, in reggae, you know, um, really helps keep, you know, keeps pushing that up-tempo thing, keep it going. Um, usually in, um, well, not usually, but in a up-tempo song that's serious, that's not, that's not positive, they may not use all those, uh, you know, um, tambourines and, and claves and and shakers and all that because they want to keep it sounding more serious um, but uh, but an up-tempo positive songs yeah you can use that stuff you know they you know anything that makes the song sparkle a little bit you know is always is always encouraged you know yeah um, okay um, up-tempo positive uh, let's see. Um, let's look at the categories that we have, uh, the basic categories for songwriters uh, and writers of any kind. Uh, is uh, These are the categories we have. Is um, love or, yeah, I mean, we're going to stay with love because we're talking about up-tempo positive. So you can, do, you can do love and the opposite of love, which is, which is hate or, you know, disliking something. Uh, but we're going to go love. You've got subjects of home, which means, you know, your mom, dad, sister, brother, pets, your house, uh, you know, all the home stuff, you know, your childhood, home, just topics of home. Um, and re then that includes your relatives. And then we have a uh, object. We can write about an object. Uh, we can write about a job or a hobby. Uh, we can write about travel. We can write about spirituality, faith. Even voodoo, you know. So anything that's not of this world, um, that that's faith based, we can write about that. We can write about philosophy, the philosophy of life, um, and we can write about uh, social commentary or, or political, right? But we want to write about it in a in a in a positive way, right? Um, so um, let's see. There's two ways to drive a song. We can drive it with stories or we can drive it with emotions, right? And the songs we're about to get into are going to be both. We'll have some emotional songs to look at and we'll have some, um, some uh, uh, story-driven songs to look at. Um, when we think about story songs, we, we, I, I think, well, we can have a story over a long period of time, which is a, which is a narrative. Uh, where it starts one place and, and, and it just goes along and goes along until you're finally at the end. So you have a sense of time passing. Uh, and then the other um, type of uh, story-driven song is a single setting. We can have a single setting uh, where the whole song takes place in one location. We can also have description songs. We can just describe things. Uh, we can describe an object like our our favorite car. It can be an up-tempo positive song like Little Deuce Coop. You don't know what you got, right? That's a great Beach Boys uh, song about an object. And uh, Gil Gillian Welch wrote about uh, that wonderful uh, uh, Rocket 88, uh, I think it's called. or, or um, It's about a Buick. Um, just look up Gillian Welch, and she has a great song, an absolutely great song about her car. Uh, and uh, let's see. Um, yeah. Oh, 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 you can write about dates, places. Um, you can write about a person. You can des describe a person that you love, just the description of them. And then we get to emotional, emotional writing, which, you know, a lot of, a lot of songs are emotional, emotionally driven. But um, in order to keep them interesting, because we understand that emotional writing is finite, as opposed to physical writing, the real world is infinite, whereas the emotional world 
is finite. There's only so many ways you can express love, for instance. How many different ways? Well, I adore you. I cherish you. I worship you. I love you. I like you a lot. Um, you see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run out of things after a while. So it's, it's finite. But when I talk about examples or places or stories about love, those are infinite, right? So when we write emotional songs, it's really good to just go ahead and um, use examples, use physical examples of this emotion to help bolster your song and make it interesting. Um, because let's say, let's, let's get to the point here. Uh, if emotions are finite, what's the problem there? The problem is cliche. So if we're gonna stay in, a, if we're gonna stay in the emotional world, lyrically, where we stand a big chance of running into cliches, and I might say too many cliches, because yeah, we can use cliches. Of course we can. You know, people. Uh, that's why they're cliches, because a lot of people know this, know these expressions, but. You know, too many of them. So we like to break out of, even in emotional writing, we like to like to describe this person, this love thing. Talk about a location where they met. Uh, you know, um, all these different little physical examples and symptoms are good too. Uh, a symptom would be like, you know, like uh, I got a lump in my throat. When I saw her coming down the aisle, that's, you know, that's, you know, I mean, Chuck Berry, you kidding me? I got a lump in my throat when I saw her coming down the aisle. I got the wiggles in my knees when she looked at me and squeezed a smile. There she is again, standing over by the wrecking machine. Looking like a model on the cover of a magazine, yeah. She's too cute to be a minute over 17. Meanwhile, I'm thinking, and so forth and so on. Um, Chuck Berry, man. Come on, Chuck Berry, you kidding me? He is a... Uh, he, he created, he almost single-handedly created rock and roll, you know. Uh, amazing guy, singer, songwriter, killer guitar player, and band leader, and just a man about town. <laughs> he got into trouble with the police a lot for uh, hanging out with young ladies and then taking them across state lines. Ooh, they didn't like that. They didn't like that. No, they didn't. So that poor guy got arrested a lot, but man, what a great life he had. I had a very dear friend that was um, his drummer for a long time. And uh, he said it was just a great gig. He loved it. Um, Chuck was sort of at the end of his career. And so he was a tiny bit grumpy now and then. Oops. But uh, he made up for it with, uh, you know, with his... Uh, generosity and his uh, fantastic songs you know I mean you just can't you can't beat him I'm sorry I missed him he was he was playing in St. Louis uh, once a week at this little club where he lived uh, for, a, for a number of years and I kept saying man I'm going to go out there I'm going to go up there and listen to him you know pay homage to the master you know and uh, you know he I just waited too long and he passed away, but, uh... all right, Todd, thank you for the compliment. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Well, um, I've given you kind of a, you know, kind of a rough overview of positive uptempo. A lot of it has to do with the music and the rhythm, uh, contrast and repetition, you know, setting up a particular, um, uh, situation and then because uh, most of songwriting is setting up expectations and then giving them what they expect or giving them a surprise and that's why we love 
the contrast part of, of the three tools, right? Okay, now um, I'm going to remind you all to go back to the top of this chat. My chat is over here. Uh, go to the top of that chat and, and go to that, uh, go to that uh, folder. And in that folder, you will see, uh, it says Creative Uptempo Study. Create, uh, oh, it says, yeah, it may say Creative Uptempo Positive Study. So um, get a hold of that. And then uh, we're going to start looking at some songs. Um, to give examples of, of how this thing can be done, how this uh, up-tempo thing, uh, how, how it can be pulled off. These are all monster hits that I've, I've put on this list, and they're all in there for a, several, for slightly different reasons, right? Um, the first one I put in there is Uptown Funk. Uh, I mean, come on. You know, you just, you, you can't beat it. Uptown Funk, let's see. Um, I have here... A little um, I have a Spotify let's see um, maybe play a little of this uh, and see see how you can hear it I'm, I'm gonna play a little of it and see if if you uh, if you hear it uh, uh, worth you know if this is worthwhile doing I mean... Alright, I mean, you can get the idea from, the, from what's going on here. I mean... They are using, uh, can you, uh, let me know, uh, can you hear that good enough to be worthwhile listening to? Is, did, the, did the music come across okay? Or uh, is it, uh, hello there, big bad uh, boogus. Uh, good to have you, good to have you aboard. We're talking about up-tempo positive songs. And thank you for, um, thank you, uh, the big bad bogus is now hosting Streaming with zero followers. All right. Woo. All right. Yeah. Uh, how is the music? How, how did it sound? Could you hear it okay? Um, yes. Good. Audio. Okay. Good. Because uh, I don't want to do that if it's just be all muddled. But that's good. Okay. Uptown Funk. What the heck? Um, and there's uh, the, 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 let's see, Real Smith. Good. We got uh, good afternoon. Music is at is at a good level. Good. Good. Uh, no bass. Well, of course, no. There there won't be any bass. <laughs> there won't be any bass. Uh, now you can later go on Spotify uh, and and listen to these songs. You know, so you can make a list of the songs that we're listening to today. And in fact, you can download. Um, you can download <laughs> these, uh, you know, these lyrics, and then go and then make your own Spotify list. Uh, I started the list. I've got about halfway through it, but then 
I ran out of time because it's one o'clock and I had to talk to you guys and gals. So here I am. Uh, so uh, I won't have a song example for everything right on the tip of my tongue, but I can always go into Spotify and type it in if we want to listen to it and it'll pop right up. Also, uh, YouTube is another one where you can find these songs. You know, all these songs are big songs. But let's let's analyze this a little bit. Um, I mean, this thing is so happy. This song is so up tempo and so positive. One of the things that occurs to me right away is the um, exceptional amount of contrast that's in this thing. It's, it, it starts one way and then it quickly switches to another thing and then switches quickly to another. So there's the interest in this. You're constantly being assaulted with slight little, with little, what I call little happy surprises um, in this song. Uh, even the way it starts, you know, you, you don't know where it's even going when it, when it starts up. It, it starts really soft and then suddenly, boom, you know, uh, and it's, and it's going along at, at, at breakneck speed. It's, it's sort of a singing rap really is what's going on. Uh, uh, this hit, that ice cold, Michelle Pfeiffer, that white gold. Now, I love that. I mean, everybody just loved the, the reference to Michelle Pfeiffer. Again, that sparkle of originality right on the second line. This hit, that ice cold, Michelle Pfeiffer, that white gold. This one for them, good, them hood girls, them good girls straight masterpiece. Styling, wiling, living it up in the city. Now, you notice we've changed the line rhythm already. So, so this hit, that cold, cold. me, Jeff, five of that white gold. One, them, um, this one for them hood girls, them good girls, straight masterpiece. Styling, stop. Wiling, stop. Living it up for the city. That's real important. Those little pauses there, you go, oh, what was that? You know, so if you were, if this song was playing in the background and suddenly there's those stops, I swear to God, you'll go, what was that? Oh, this is cool, man. I, maybe I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing and I should pay more attention to this song. Uh, so uh, nice little little tricks there. Um, um, Styling one, living it up for the city. Got Chuck's, got Chuck's on with St. Laurent, I don't know what that is. Got to kiss myself, I'm so pretty. That is such a funny line. So we've got humor in this, right? He is, uh, he is self-congratulating himself on, on he, he, I mean, he's, it, it's, it's, obviously it's a joke. You know, he's, he's kind of making fun of himself. You know, I got to kiss myself, I'm so pretty. I mean, that, that just causes a great laugh. So right away, I mean, in these f first six lines, we are hooked in. We've got the Michelle Pfeiffer reference. We've got uh, we've got the Wyland styling. We got the breaking up the, of the line rhythm, um, and then kiss myself. I'm so pretty. That's so good. And I, and I'm too hot. Um, call police and the firemen. Too hot. So once again, we've changed the the, the section has changed to a, a pre-chorus, right? So we've changed our line rhythm and our master and our uh, and our and our uh, our music is starting to change. So we have great, you know, we go how many lines? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines. Um, that's so interesting that it's, that it's an uneven amount of lines, but but because uh, usually uneven lines create tension and even lines uh, don't, but this is an interesting, interesting uh, observation that I just made. Um, I wonder. Let me listen to that again. Let's listen to that again and see and see if there's any tension created by uneven lines here. Let's just uh, let's start that song again and see. Um, we'll try to start it from the where it, where it actually where the music starts. Oh, I see. 
I kill you. Music changes. Keep your head interest going. And of course, that up tempo pony on. Nice. Notice he said break it down, and uh, the the uh, the uh, the band stops playing, creating a ton of tension, right? And that four on the floor uh, kick drum, boom, 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 boom. That's just awesome. You know, he's just gonna, he's got you. Now you're waiting, building, building. Still building. And then boom, we, we break into, <laughs> we break into a, uh, an instrumental. This is where the this is where the chorus is, and the chorus is 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 just this beautiful horn line. Again, dropping out. Stop. Boy, I tell you, there's just so much interest musically in this track. Uh, the guitar comes in, little tiny guitar riffs, there's stops, there's starts. I mean, this song is just so beautifully interesting all the way through. Lots of contrast and, at the appropriate moments, lost lots of repetition. Like that girl said, girl, hit you, hallelujah, girl, hit you, hallelujah. Girl, hit you, hallelujah, because up to funk, don't give it to you. Cause up to, I mean, the build on this thing is just incredible. It's wonderful. So um, if you don't believe me, just watch. It's basically the only, uh, that's the only words in, in what we would call a chorus, right? And then it gets back into a verse. And uh, so let's, let's look at what he's, what, let's look at the content of these lyrics. Now that we've talked a little bit about it musically and rhythmically, um, this hit, that ice cold, Michelle Pfeiffer, that white gold. So we're talking about, uh, we throw in a, 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 movie, a movie star, white gold. This one's for them hood girls. So now he's talking about the girls in, in, in his neighborhood uh, and, the, and, how, and how they look, their description, which is masterpiece. And then talk about what do they do? They style on the wild and living up for the city. Um, Got Chuck on with the Saint Laurent. I guess that's oh those that, that's um that's uh, um uh, what do you call it um oh, that's part of their clothing. Yeah, I just realized that's what it is. Uh, let me go over here. Where's my pointer? Okay, I got some comments here. Uh, okay, see, uh, not bad though. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, I'm not too into pop. All right. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, nor can I type, right? Uh, all right, good. I'm um, just trying to respond here. Uh, okay, he likes Goo Rock. I don't know what Goo Rock is. That's interesting. Um, let's see. Checks or shoes. Right, right. Yeah, no, that I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. And so these are descriptions of, uh, of, of shoe places. And then, um, and then it, so, so we've got all these different wonderful little things like, uh, uh, I'm too hot, call the police and the firemen. That's so funny, right? So he takes a simple term like I'm hot, and then he describes the heat, right? So he digs deeper into what hot could be. And so that's a great little t little little tip for us writers. So if we say, you know, I'm thirsty, and then you can say, you know, a little gin and tonic might do me some good, right? So you can say a general a general statement, and then give a more specific example of it, right? A general statement, specific example. General statement, 
specific example of it. And uh, he does a lot of that, uh, which is really cool. And then, um, let's see. Um, Uptown Funk, going to give it to you. Uptown Funk, going to give it to you. Uh, Uptown Funk, going to give it to you. Saturday night, and we're in the spot. Don't believe me, just watch. That's so good. That's so good. Uh, Uptown Funk, yeah. And then the whole thing about stop, wait a minute, fill my cup, put some liquor in it. I love that rhyme, minute and in it. I call that um, um, syllabic contrast. So when we say wait a minute, we're expecting another two-minute a two-syllable word, minute, like, uh, senate, minute, get it, get it, uh, I can't, Guinness would work, um, but instead, he does in it, two single-syllable words, um, which to me is a wonderful little, again, it's that little contrasting thing and a little unexpected um, uh, surprise. Uh, stop, wait a minute, fill my cup and put some liquor in it. That's so cool. Take a sip, sign a check. Julio, get the stretch. Ride, ride to Harlem, Hollywood, Jackson, Mississippi. So he, he's now just making a list of different cities where, where all this partying is going on. Um, if you show up, we're going to show out. Smoother than a fresh jar of Skippy. And there's that, there's that great detail, original detail. Like Michelle Pfeiffer, you remember that. Um, and, uh, and I'm sure the, the girls would remember the Chucks with the Saint Laurent. I'm, I'm sure they remember that kind of stuff because those are brands they love. And, um, and then this, uh, he ends that, he ends that section with smoother than a fresh jar of Skippy. I mean, that just, that's just so original and so fresh. I just, I just, I just think that's a great example of a little smatterings here and there of original, original detail. Is just really just kicks the whole thing up a notch, doesn't it? I'm, I'm getting, I'm heating my. All right. So what's what's the theme of this? He's talking about, um, it, well, the theme is Uptown Funk. He's talking about this style of funk is going to make you feel great. So he's describing all the different ways in which Uptown, uptown Funk can do this. So he talks about uh, places. He talks about descriptions of people. He d talks about what those people do. He talks about what he does uh, with his friends he describes himself. He says, I'm too hot. Call the police and firemen. Uh, I'm too hot. Uh, make a dra dragon want to retire, man. I mean, good Lord, man. That's, that's, that's just so awesome. Um, uh, firemen and retire man, right? Again, so, slight syllabic contrasting. It's so good. Uh, say my name. You know who I am. So firemen, retirement and who I am. That's just really, really good, good, uh, good rhyming. And uh, uh, with unexpected words, you know, I, I love to, I love to find unexpected rhyme words. I think that's so much fun to do. And I use my Wiki Rhymer Pro. Uh, you know, I pay, I pay whatever it is, $11 a year or something to keep the, uh, the Pro version of this. Um, because you uh, uh, wikirhymer.com, you can dig so deep into rhyme with that rhymer. It's just it's just awesome, right? Because um, soft rhyme to me is uh, is more interesting than uh, than perfect rhyme, because perfect rhyme, because it's limited, is predictable, whereas none of these words here are predictable. Uh, fireman, retireman, who I am. I mean, none of those are predictable. I just think that's just wonderful. And minute, liquor in it, check, stretch. Again, I would have never put check and stretch together, but um, he did, you know. And um, 
And then Jackson, Mississippi, a uh, fresh jar of Skippy. That's just such a great, great rhyme. Again, soft rhyme, um, meaning that Skippy, oh no, Mississippi, Skippy. Actually, it's a perfect rhyme. That's, that's fantastic. Another thing I love to uh, discover is words that have never been rhymed before. You know, I love to, when, when we run into, like, brochure. Have brochure as a rhyme word. Um, it's so much fun to come up with, with a rhyme for, for a word that, you know, that we've not used very much. Brochure, bonjour, um, be sure, um, contour, great, you know, great rhyme things. All right. Um, so Uptown Funk, it's kind of, it's, it's about a dance, isn't it? It's, it's about a dance. Uh, and he just does all, he just really digs into all the different ways you can describe this thing. Uh, all the different actions and descriptions and, uh, uh, and emotions. It's just a beautiful potpourri of all those things, right? Now, let's talk about another song, a little song that... Uh, the second song, where's my pointer? Where'd it go? Come on. Um, the second song that we're going to talk about is a little ditty that made a little bit of money for these guys. Let's see what we got here. Baby, you a song, you make me want to roll my windows down and cross. This song made so much money, and uh, we want to know how did they do this, and what 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 made this made this work uh, to be such a, an incredibly huge hit. Um, well, uh, obviously, it's it's uh, the tr this actually this song this song uh, actually created a whole genre uh, which they called bro love. Uh, songs uh, and it started a whole huge for years and years uh, this this uh, this uh, celebration of guys and uh, and how wonderful guys are and their and their and their girls that are uh, you know hanging out with them uh, it, was, it was called bro love and um, man I'll tell you it was it was it, it's still going on. Not as much as it was, but for a long time, I mean, for at least 10 years, this was, um, this was a formula where, you know, let's talk about guys and their trucks and their girls and their ice chests and all this stuff. Um, but let's, let's look at this specific song and, f and figure out what is it that made this song such a huge, huge hit. And uh, one of the things that, that I noticed right away is that it does... Uh, the same thing that Uptown Funk did, except this was in a country vein. It 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 um, it brought in the the style of hip hop and rap that um, that verse. Uh, when I first saw that bikini top on her, she popped right out of that source charge of water. That, that that kind of rhythm is a very sort of rap hip hop uh, rap, and uh, so that right away it sounded very contemporary and cool uh and then uh let's start at the very beginning however he opens with a refrain that's part of the chorus well baby you a song make me want to roll my windows down and cruise 
So right away, because it opens with a little, a little smidgen of the chorus, it's super got our attention, you know, because we want to know, well, what do you mean by this? What do you mean, baby, you're a song? You make me want to roll my windows down. And song and down rhyme. A soft rhyme, but still nice. And cruise. Um, make sure this isn't anything super important. No, it's not. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Um, and then it starts describing this, this woman. When I first saw... That bikini top on her, she popped right out of that South Georgia water. Thought, oh my lord, she had them long tan legs, and and there's some nice little pop. There's little little stops there. Uh, again, those little um, punctuating stops uh, that um, you know uh, create. You go whoa, create that interest. Uh, and uh, and again, the track is just the track is just incredibly just burning hot, right? Um, and then, well, baby, you a song make me want to roll my windows down and cruise. Notice how we've really broken up the rhythm between the um, between the verse and the chorus is a huge, massive difference. In, in uh, so that really gets your attention with that chorus being so different. When I first thought that bikini top on her, the dot right, uh, the, 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 the water. I thought, oh my God, that my legs the good. Uh, the, and I walk up and said, and I believe there's a little three four in there. And so I walked up and said, that's one two three one two three. So he, they put in a little over the four four, the four four two. Three, four, da 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 ba da da ba da da ba da da. That's three four rhythm on top of a four four. Very popular to get someone's attention. And they and they did that right at the end of the verse, going into the chorus. Oh well, baby, you a song make me want to roll my windows down. Notice that that's a much longer line. Baby, you a song, ba da 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 long, ga da 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 da. But da, ba, da 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 That's the predictable thing that you hear that you think you're going to hear, right? But you don't. You get this lo much longer line, and that longer line creates a sense of, oh, whoa, 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 what's going on? This line is not as much longer than I thought it was. So again, you're you're intrigued about why is this so long, and you get that feeling of, of that a sense of, of um, of, of finality. You know, when you have a longer line than expected. So, baby, you a song. You make me want to roll my windows down. And if that wasn't too long, if that wasn't long enough for you, and cruise, right? So they stick that, that extra extra thing on there. I mean, that's really very, very good songwriting right there. Uh, baby, you a song. Make me want to roll my windows down. They could have stopped there. Dead a little long. But da 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 want da dindo down, right? But instead they add that and cruise. Baby, you a song. You make me want to roll my windows down and cruise. Boom. So baby is that's the one, one two. So these are the four bars. Baby, you're a song. You make me want to roll my and then window is on is on the next downbeat. Window down and cruise is on the three, the one and the three. Those are the two places where it stresses most, is on the one and the three. The two and the four don't have as much um, emphasis on them. So they really did a very nice job on that. Uh, baby, you a song, you make me want to roll my windows down and cruise. Down, down the back roads, what is it? Um, down the back roads, blowing stops, blowing back, blowing stops. Down the back roads, blowing stop signs through the middle of every little farm town with you. So, and cruise with you. In this brand new Chevy with a lift kit, that's awesome. Uh, so we've got, um, we're, what we're doing is we're describing in this, in this up-tempo song, we're describing the girl 
and we're making it richer by what we're going to what this girl makes you want to do which i thought was a great little addition rather than just talking about the girl they took this this girl and they put her in a setting that they make it makes me want to do this you know so that addition that 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 splash of color in our in our visual of this song really increased the level of entertainment of this tune rather than just saying who she is it's saying you make me want to do this thing right and that additional um, bit of uh, information to me really created even more interest in this song and and I apologize I know some of you folks are saying you don't like the song but uh, you know it's a it, 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 the song made so many gazillion jillions of dollars I thought we'd look at it and see what made this song so so incredible yeah, this um tempo positive song and uh, so uh, it's just the, uh, describing the girl but also adding into that this description of getting in this getting in this car and driving with her right and um let's see in the second verse it says she was sipping on uh, on a southern singing Marshall Tucker uh we were falling in love in that s sweet heart of summer so Tucker and Summer, great, great, great uh, uh, rhyme words there. Uh, and also, I want to mention um, the other thing that's going on here that's very interesting is this is a feminine ending, uh, like like uh, honor, water. Those are feminine endings which create tension. Watch this. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Dun, da, dun, da, dun, da, da, da. That's feminine because the accent is on the second to the last syllable and not the last syllable. A masculine ending would be bump, ba dump, ba dump, ba dump. Right? Here's a feminine ending. Dump, ba dump, ba dump, ba da da. Now you can hear what the ear, what the listener is expecting is. Let's start it over again, and I'm going to give you the next line. Dump, but dump, da dump, da da da, dump, but dump, but dump, ba. You want to hear dump. You don't want to hear another feminine. You want to hear a masculine. The feminine ending wants to resolve to a masculine on the next line, because feminine endings are creating tension. Because they didn't, this, it, it, the line didn't end on a stress. It ended on a non-stress syllable. And we can call that a dangler. You know, it's just out there dangling. And so it needs to be completed. And it needs to be, we need that, we need that either a comma or a, or a period, right? So dump, but dump, but dump, but da da, dump, but dump, but dump, but dump. Ah, thank God. We resolve that little hang, that little dangler out there on the first line. But if I keep going, dump, but dump, but dump, but da da, dump, but dump, but dump, but da da. You see, now I'm continuing the tension, right? And so they have created this wonderful uh, honor water, and then they resolved it with, finally resolved it after two feminine endings. I thought, oh my God. I uh, had this long tan legs, lung bung bum, couldn't help myself, so I, three, four, da, 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 da. So I walked up and said, right? So cool, so cool. And they did the same thing in the second verse. They did um, Marshall Tucker, and then they did Summer, right? And then they did Truck and Stuck. So they did feminine endings um, to, end, to end those two lines. But the creating, um, I remember Diamond Guy who came, came, it's me. Well, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Um, I was just saying, anyway, just saying hi, thanks. Good to have you aboard. Good to have you aboard. I'm glad to have you. Um, um,
Let's see what we got here. Oh, he's saying, um, oh, pizza, thank you, yummy, I'm, I'm on a diet, but I got to eat the gift, got to eat the gift. Um, so we have, uh, we have uh, Todd here saying uh, he was fascinated with the song, In Hell, I'll Be in Good Company, by Canadian band Dead South. Oh, that's cool. I'll have to check that out uh, after this session. That'd be fun to look at. Um, all right. Um, so you, we can see all the we can see all these wonderful elements that add up to um, uh, that add up to a hit song. First of all, the incredible track itself. Uh, then um, the hip hop style of verse with the very rich uh, imagery, tons of imagery. We've got bikinis. We got popping right out, which is, again, verbs. We don't want to um, underestimate the power of verbs. Verbs tell us who we are, our state of being, and then they also give us actions, right? And so, tuning, fine tuning our verbs is really important. So, oftentimes, when I find myself with boring verbs, I'll go on to my thesaurus online. There's an online thesaurus, many of them. I just go to thesaurus.com. And I'll put in, like, go. Like, I'm, I'm going to go somewhere. So I'll put in go, and then, you know, it might say skip or jump or or it might say pop. And I go, oh, yeah, let's, let's pop on over. So fine-tuning your verbs is really is really important, you know. Uh, so 